Hi, here's Chris with a new quick tip video for Blender. Today I show you how to set up the strain wheels here. As you can see, we have a scene with two wheels. And the wheels are animated. I show you how to rig this setup and how to control the whole animation just by using one object and where the advantages of this system are. So let's see how this works. Okay, so first let's see how the scene have to be prepared. So I have prepared some objects for our train wheel scene here. You can see two wheels, of course. Then we have uh, some empties. This is an empty for this arm here. It's uh, used for this wheel. Then we have another empty that have to be created for this wheel. Then we have uh, another empty, I called it the rig parent. This one will be later used to parent the whole scene here. I like always to, to parent my objects into one single parent object to move them all together. Then we have here an object uh, you maybe don't know, but uh, if you are not a beginner, you know how this works. This is actually just a mesh. So what we see here is just edges. And what I've done, I've uh, created this object here and deleted just the faces of this mesh and we just see now the edges and this is a very nice uh, tool to to use for controlling other objects so you are always able to to create your own controls uh, for rigs for example and i have made a control for the wheels to control the wheels here and this uh, the sign here tells me uh, in which direction my wheel is rotating so great, let's begin to rig this scene. First, we need to add some parenting. So what we do is we put these elements here all together to our parent object here, to this one. Oh, this one too, of course. And I click again to this parent object. Now I can move them all. And this is an active object. And all the other objects are now parented to the parent object. I don't parent this one because, uh, I don't know, this time not. We can do it if we like, but we don't need to. So this is sometimes important if you want to keep your control elements at one position. So, well, well, I have now here the parent object and will parent now this object by control P and parent to object. Great. Now, when I move my parent, all objects are moving with it together. Then we have to parent this arm here, this parent to our wheel. We need it for our arm here later. So we parent this to, um, when, I, when I move this wheel, for example, in the x-axis, then this element have to be moved with it together. So we take this one, take this wheel and parent it too. So when I move it now, you see it will be rotation, rotated with this object. So as a second thing I will do is I will move this a little bit up here to, to some position. So to do this, I click here on my wheel and I go into the wireframe mode and look into the edit mode. And let's see where I will parent it. I think I will, sorry, I will use it here with the vertex and I move my origin, my, my, um, my cursor to the active position here and now i use this this arm to move it here so control uh, shift s and you i see the selection to cursor now my selected object will be moved to here so when i move now the uh, wheel then you see it is here at this position the same I do with this one. As you can see, this is not the same. So I will take this target, put it here, control P, and this is now my parent. And I do the same here. I, sorry, uh, I'm still in the old blender. So here we have it, because these are two instances. So we see always the same vertex. So I will 
put the cursor to the active here and now now um, now I will put this element here this target to this shift s and move the selection to my cursor great so when I move it or when I rotate and it works here so now we take the arm the interesting here at the arm is the arm has uh, the origin here at this position so when I when I rotate the arm so I rotate it around my origin and you see this happen this is important because our arm have to look at a special position later so to do so what we do now is we will take this arm and parent it with this object because when I move this object then our arm will be moved with this object together so well I take this put it here at this position and parent it to this object so what we now see is when I rotate it everything is rotated in this position to reset this position to this position we just press alt G Control G, no. Wait. How to make this? Uh, okay, I will put it to this one. This is to this and Shift S. Selection to active. No, this has to be. Sorry. Uh, actually, this selection has to be moved. My selection to active. Why is it not working? Any ideas? Yes, selection to active. No. So I don't know why is it not working. Okay, then we will make uh, this. I will put my cursor at cursor to my active here, and then I will move the selection to cursor. For any reason, in this version of Blender, it is not possible to to move here in the hierarchy is a selection to active. However, good. So when you see, now I'm rotating the wheel again and all is rotating, but our arm is still in the same position. So to make it more interesting or to follow the direction, we use a constraint for this arm. Before we do this, I will move both or these objects here a little bit to the side so here then, then it looks better okay great now we go to the arm and we say you will get a constraint here object constraint so this arm have to look at or track to a special object so you see this time you see here is a track to modifier or the constraint and it's red because there is no target where the arm have to look at so we take this object picker and use the arm target for it. Now our object is looking to this object. We can see it when I rotate. You see, when I rotate this arm, it is looking always to this direction. So the same will happen when I move the wheel somewhere. Our arm is looking to this position here, to this object. I can move the object and you see my arm is following. Great. If you have any problems to look at this position, so you have to look first the epsilon, this axis, the green one is looking to our target. So when I say X, then our red, our X position is looking to our target. So don't forget um, you uh, to, to create your objects in the right, right direction. If not, you can change it here and uh, you can change the axis to make it different so for example when I want to look away from my object so I use the epsilon or the minus epsilon and when I rotate it you see then it looks away from my target so great this is for a small explanation and the yes and you can use of course the up axis so we can use the epsilon axis for the up but we don't here is a target okay we don't need these options if everything is working Great. Now, um, what is this? what is the status? The status is our wheel is working like this. Good. And when I rotate this one, it will follow. 
great. So when I'm rotating these two objects here, and I use now the individual origins to rotate individual objects by rotating, then already this is happening, you see? So our scene is already nearly finished. So I tell you where the advantage is to control two objects by one one source here, by this object. Why uh, we do this? Because normally we would be ready already now. Um, but the problem is when I want to animate this, I have to set a keyframe to this wheel and a keyframe to this wheel. So we have two objects that we have to control with that we have to set key keyframes for them. But we want to have just one object to be controlled by keyframes. This is always better. This here is a small example. You have a very simple scene, a very simple rig, with simple setup. And if you have later, you have, for example, I don't know, a very big setup like a transformer, robot, or whatever. It's better to control a transformation for the robot by using one single element by a slider, then the robot will translate or transform. So you have only have to, to animate the slider and all other things are constrained and controlled by drivers and so on. So the only reason is US, it's a simpler scene or it's simpler to animate just one object. So how to animate this both wheels together with this object? For this, um, we will use a child of constraint. So this object, this wheel, and this wheel have to be the child of this one and have to follow some values. So for this, first I click on this wheel here and we say we go to the constraints again and we go to the constraint and say you are you have a relationship with another object and you are a child of it. At the moment you see it's again red because there is no parent. So I take the target that have to be the parent and we say this is the target. So what happened? You see um, the target define now the elements of this object. So when I rotate this here, then we see it's like a regular target and our wheel is moving with or rotating with our main object. So what we want to do is we just want to control the rotation of our wheel, not the location and not the scaling. So you see here are the options. We don't want to control the location. We just want to control the rotation. You see, that's it. Now, when I rotating this wheel, you see, this is rotating. So the same can be done for this one. We add a child of constraint to and say this is the object that is controlling it and no location elements will be controlled. The point is when I scale it, the both, both wheels are scaled, of course, because the scaling relationship is here connected with the main object here. But if you want, you can switch it off. So we do it maybe and there is no scaling nothing happens just when I move the object. So what is happening then? You can see what I make as I rotate my main, my parent object and the wheels are rotating the same. So when I rotate it and freeze just the X ro rotation, the X axis and all is working fine. So another tip is what to do to, let's say, freeze this object and any, no, no, um, any way where or um, if, if we use any position and rotate it, only the X axis have to rotate. It have to only rotate. So what we can do is here and we can um, freeze some elements here. So that, um, so if we move it, then it will be just rotating. To, to do this, we um, limit here, we limit the controls of this object. So I click on this object and now go again to the constraints and say we want to limit something. And in this case, we want to limit the rotation. So 
if I move this object or if I rotate it, just a special axis have to be rotated. At the moment, after I've added this constraint, the rotation is working in all directions. You see it. So when I move it, when I move the view to here and I rotate it, you see everything is rotated. So now I say the limitation is to x. So now when I'm rotating, just the um, x axis have to be rotated. Sorry, uh, wait, I make this. I have made a small mistake. So right, great. Now the limitation is don't rotate the epsilon and the z axis, just the x axis. Here you see it. When I click on all all three, nothing happens when I rotate. You see? So I open now the x axis and say, anyway, where I'm looking from, only the x axis will be rotated. You see? This is very interesting for controlling objects and set limitations for them. Really nice. And here you can uh, set values too. So for example, if you say maximum is 45 degrees, then I can rotate it just, oh, sorry, zero. Here we have to set it 45. So you see it's stopping at 45 degrees. When I put it to 90, then it's going up to 90 and stops and go back to zero and stops. It means here is zero, there is 90. So you have the possibility, if you want, to limit a rotation. It's very interesting for rigging arms, for example, or something like this, or doors. If you want to open a door and, have, and the door have to stop at some position, so you can do it by limit, limit this value here. So great, now I can move it all around because the limitation is not active for the x-axis and now it's working. So you see, all is fine and anyway where I'm moving it, all is working. I can move the control object here and rotate it and all is working fine. So now you have seen how it is, to, uh, how it works to, to make a easy rig for these wheels and move it or and um, and uh, control it by just one one object here, and uh, yeah, and it's, that's it. I hope you liked my small explanation, and I would be very happy if you subscribe my YouTube channel or visit my Gumroad shop or my website. Thank you very much. Bye bye.